that's stupid. Hi, my name is Stefano Lucato from Audio Modeling and we are here with uh, Claudio Passavanti, Dr. Mix. Hi, Claudio. How you doing, man? I know that you have a lot of uh, questions uh, to do about uh, SWAM. Boy, do I ever. So, uh, we've been playing a, I've been playing a little bit with it, but you know, I know very little about it. So, I wanted to ask you, firstly, what's the difference between a sample instrument and a model instrument like the one that you have developed here? In a sample library, you have pre-recorded a, a performance from another musician. Right. In the physical modeling and modeling instrument, uh, is the MIDI musician that performs the sound. Right. It's a totally different concept. So basically you control it via MIDI, essentially. Yes, because uh, in a sample library, when you play a note, uh, the, for example, the vibrato, vibrato, yeah is already recorded from another right. musician. Right, right, right. Whilst here, it, it, it creates a physical model of that vibrato. Yes, the physical condition, mechanical condition, to the creation of the sound. Can you demonstrate that on a violin, for example? Please? Yes. Sir. So that's Camelot, and it's controlling yes. the interface. Can we see the interface, please? Okay. So that's the Swan plugin. Yes. Sir. So please show me how a vibrato is done on, on this instrument. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So you just done vibrato and then you've done legato. <laughs> yeah. How did you do that? The legato is controlled by uh, overlapping notes and the target note controls the, vibra uh, the portamento speed. Okay, so, so basically if you press it uh, uh, slowly, oh. it does the glitch. And if you press it fast, yes. it got. oh, that's really clever. And here's the vibrato. Right, so basically what you're saying is that the vibrato and these things are actually an algorithm yes. that recreates the acoustic effect of it. Yes, the vibrato uh, or portamento created exactly the shortness of the string right. uh, as you can see in the interface. the green point on the, the fret. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see that green point more yes. moving around. So yes. that, that is a, a physical, uh, like a visual representation. Yes, you physically reduce the length of the string. That's awesome. So listen, what... Also during the vibrato. Also during the vibrato. That's awesome. So can you also mimic the way the bow yes. is we put on the string? We can control the, the, bow the bow speed, the bow pressure, and the bow position on the string near the bridge or toward the... the can you please demonstrate that? Yes. Let me take my camera because I want to show that. So you're controlling that bow speed and the intensity with the pedal. You can control how hard you press the bow on the string. So that is the pressure. And yes. then can you also control like the actual movement of the bow going up and down? Yes, with bowing mode. How do you set that up? Here. Okay. Bowing mode. And uh, we con uh, it's interesting to control the bow pressure during the bowing mode. And they react like a real instrument. Wow, so bow control there yes. and pressure of the bow there. Yes. So let's take it even further. Are you saying that basically you can also decide where along the string you put your bow, so ba closer to the bridge or to the neck? Yes, it's possible. So How do you do that? Uh, there is a parameter that um, is called the uh, uh, bow pit position. Right. And uh, I can assign to a knob, uh, for example, MIDI mapping, 
midi bow position, learn. I move, um, okay, speed. Okay, come back to the main GUI. Wow. Do you mind if I try it? Yes. So are we in Boeing mode right now? No, 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 it's uh, normal. I would like to try no. Boeing mode. Yes. That. Okay. Boeing. <laughs> this is so cool do you know what can i try i don't know can, can i do a cello yeah yes. oh right so now with the uh, swarm you have called up a new instance and that's a cello instance <laughs> A minor, <laughs> La minore. Are you aware that what you're doing here is fantastically futuristic? Yes. I, I think that uh, physical modeling is a future technology. Wow. From, I, I don't know why it is uh, abandoned in the past. Because it's hard. Yes, it's, it's hard. To but do, clearly but not for you. I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I haven't known you uh, long enough, but I mean, I've known you for, for like 20 years because we met before, but we've just met like once very quickly, very briefly. And now to see what you're doing here is like the result of your also ma uh, mathematical studies. Is that what you would say? No, yeah, I have not a great uh, mathematical study. Uh... But this is complex. Yes, it's complete. It's, um, there are a lot of algorithms inside. In particular, uh, the Bauer thing adopts uh, digital waveguide synthesis from Julius Smith, Professor Smith from Stanford University. Right. And uh, we improve some part of its algorithm uh, with other um, technique and uh, approach. Wow. Integrate, we integrated the, the technology. And uh, the result is... Uh, Wow. In my opinion, it's good. <laughs> it's, it's, it's stunning. It's not perfect, but it's, it's good. It's stunning. Do you know what? I would really like... I brought, I brought my breath control... Because you know I used to play breath controller a yeah. lot. I've started with the DX7, and then I moved that onto my KX5. You remember the guitar, that thing? Yeah. I, there was a breath control yes, I in it. Uh, it. It was called the BC2. But... I nowadays I have this one. Yeah. 
Can I use yes. it with uh, yes. with your say? I don't know saxophone, saxophone. maybe. Saxophone. Yes. By the way, this is a tech control, and uh, not only does it read the breath, it also reads the byte, the amount of byte, and also the uh, the movement side to side and tilt. I, I, I don't know exactly how, <laughs> how to use all of those, but I would like to try the saxophone. What is this? What, what have I got here? Yeah. I, ah, I, so interface. Yeah. I'm doing that with my breath. So I can do so basically I can do two vibratos here because yes. I can do or do <laughs> so it does glissando if I go like a third but if I go fourth it yes. does the actual fingering of it yes a chromatic uh, because in the saxophone is not possible to create a glissando like yeah. a clarinet of or, or a violin so uh, if you play an overlap uh, notes in uh, bigger interval, bigger than third. yes, uh, you can play uh, glissando mm -hmm. with chromatic. Mm -hmm. This is nuts. This is completely nuts. <laughs> and you asked me whether I had questions for you. I want to know everything about this. Um, le let's play something. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> That's stupid. <laughs> That's completely nuts. Can I do a growl as well? Yes. How? Uh, at the moment, I think it's assigned, already assigned to aftertouch. All right, let's see. <laughs> Tequila! <laughs> <laughs> right. Listen, I don't know, I don't want to keep you on forever, but, uh, you know, just, just last thing. So basically, you can, so you can buy them individually or all together? Uh, woodwinds are sold uh, in a family package. Right. Uh, so the four saxophone, uh, two clarinets, four flutes, uh, four double reeds 
and the, the bow string is possible to... Okay. Clarinet. Can I just try the clarinet and then yes. I'm finished, I well, promise. I have to set uh, uh, in for the breath controller. You can play also a very big interval. This is possible because uh, uh, clarinets, uh, differently from saxophone that uh, have only key, the, um, the clarinet have also both. So play it open. You can open yes. and that, and that's how you modeled it so that. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and this technology allows you to to do also this uh, look this articulation. I am an Italian man. I've been living in London for 17 years, and I am so proud to see Italian Thank you. Italian technology of this level come to life. I I have a lot of respect for what you're doing, and thank you for inviting me, man. Thank you, thank you, Claudia. <laughs>